Hi, welcome to Relish Books. Today I am talking a little bit about the short stories that I checked out by Claire Keegan. Um, I've read Foster and Small Things Like These and I've talked before quite a bit about how much I enjoyed those and just how much I admire um, Claire Keegan's writing and I still do. I will always think that she is one of the best uh, contemporary writers just for her literary talent, her talent with language, her talent of expressing herself, her descriptions. She has this delicate deliberateness in everything that she writes. Her descriptions are blunt and yet subtle at the same time. She's really amazing. I love her style. These short stories let me down a bit. I wasn't, I was kind of afraid this is what they were going to be like. I talked before a little bit how, about how short stories as a genre, kind of the genre itself has the reputation and the expectation of just giving you a weird feeling. They're just kind of these snippets of life and characters, usually a snapshot of life, some events. A shocking twist at the end, usually unpleasant, and then a very abrupt ending. This is the way that most literary short stories go. They're vaguely unsettling, disturbing, and they always kind of leave you just in a lurch, not really knowing what's going to happen next. This is the way most modern short stories are, unfortunately. Which is a shame because a short story can be a beautiful platform for writing. It can be used really well. Um, I really like the way that some older short stories go. I think it's a it's a very different form from the novel and you have to approach it in a very different way. But I hate this modern genre of the short story that's just kind of nasty and unpleasant and just leaves you feeling kind of yucky. So I read all three, there's only three little stories in this book. And one of them is Antarctica, which is also in this book, which is the title. Um, but I read these, and then I read about half of the stories in here. And then I was like, you know what? I don't need to be reading this. Uh, I still kind of want to. Part of me wants to because the writing's so good. But I just kind of was like, I don't really need this in my life. But so late in the day, and then, um, what's the other one called? So Late in the Day, The Long and Painful Death, and Antarctica. Of the three, in this one, The Long and Painful Death, I liked. I thought it was kind of funny. Just, just a kind of, if you take it in a humorous way, I thought it was a pretty fun little story. The descriptions are great. It just kind of gives you a, you can be interested in it without that, like, shock or unpleasantness and it's kind of put between two pretty unpleasant stories so late in the day it's kind of just a drag um just about a man whose girl left him for being a misogynist basically and then antarctica has a very striking beginning i'll just read the first line i read it and i should have I should have stopped right there, but I was, as you're supposed to do, my curiosity was, you know, piqued. Um, Every time the happily married woman went away, she wondered how it would feel to sleep with another man. That weekend, she was determined to find out. So obviously, this is going to be a bad story. And that's kind of why I quit reading them, partly for two big reasons. Because again, the writing is amazing and you can learn so much about writing just by reading her stories if that's your aim. But if you're just looking for like good stories, they're not good. Um, so the two big reasons, again, is this one very dramatically illustrates and it is a very dark and dramatic story. Um, there's a lot, a lot of the stories evolve around, revolve around adultery, about affairs and lovers which is interesting because the other big problem that i have is that the author really presents herself you know it's kind of 
ironic to me that she's writing about these characters that are misogynists because she really comes across as someone who has a deep grudge against men. This is something that we find, unfortunately, in a lot of modern literature, women writers who have this prejudice against men. And it feels, you know, it's unfair. It's like if our culture now has a bias because if this was a male author writing these stories and he was prejudiced against women, there would be an outcry and people wouldn't read her work, uh, wouldn't read his work, you know, because that's not correct to, um, to feel that way. But if women hate men, that's fine. So I don't like that. And if it was just like one story, there are a lot of bad men in the world. And if it was just like a story here and there where she has bad male characters, it would be no problem. But it's a recurring theme throughout these stories are these just mockeries of men just painting them in the worst possible way, these characters. And it's not just, it's not like they're villains with different faults. It's kind of consistently the same thing. This figure of a man, usually a husband and a father, who has no respect for women. Sometimes it's not even that he's abusive. He's usually just neglectful. Sometimes he's um, neglectful and a cheater. All these things. But this was a recurring thing throughout these stories. I don't know if in any of the stories I read there was an actually good male character. Which is interesting because in Foster and small things like these, there are good men. So I know that Claire Keegan doesn't think that there are just no good men in the world. Um, and in small things like these, the main character is the hero of the story and he is a man. So that's good. At least she's not totally that way. And maybe like, maybe in her later work, maybe this was like an earlier thing when she was younger. I kind of am wondering if she grew up around bad examples of men, maybe, maybe her father or other male relatives were not good examples. Um, I don't know. It feels like she has a bitterness and is kind of out to get revenge on men through her writing. Maybe I'm being dramatic, but that was the tone I was really getting through multiple of these stories. And I'm just, I'm just not here for that. Um, yeah. And it shed a dark, it put a dark shadow on even the stories that I would have liked otherwise, just as stories. Probably my favorite that I read of all of them was just a story called Men and Women. And I would have liked that story just as a story by itself. It has some, it has some stuff in it. It's, it's a sad story and it's dealing with a family where the father is a bad father and causing problems to his family. But as a story, I would have liked it. It's really well written. It's interesting. You get caught up in it. Again, the writing is just stupendous. But the fact that here was another character, like all these other characters I've just been reading about, kind of ruined it a little bit because it's not original at that point. She seems like she can only write about one kind of man that's a bad kind in these stories, at least. Like I said, um, it's nice to know that her two most famous books are not that way, at least not fully that way. But those were the two big problems that I had. A lot of man-hating and a lot of just affairs. And not like affairs within stories that had some um, consequence to a bigger plot or anything like that. They're just stories with no point or purpose. Just kind of there for you to be entertained by and yeah I'm just not not into that so that's why I stopped halfway through it's really nice with a collection of short stories because when you stop halfway through you didn't like not finish a book you know because each short story is a separate thing of itself so that's nice I didn't have to like quit in the middle of something and not know the end but I gave them a good try. I read quite a few, probably more than I should have, to be honest, because they were just not, not great. So for anybody looking for more, 
of Claire Keegan's work. I personally would not recommend it unless you're just really studying creative writing, unless you're studying literature. Um, studying her work in small amounts here and there would be very beneficial because her writing is amazing. And Foster and small things like these are genuinely good stories. Not just the writing, they're actually good, beautiful stories. So that's encouraging. I'm not brokenhearted here because I know she's capable of goodness. These were just not good. So those are my thoughts on these two short story collections by Claire Keegan, So Late in the Day and Antarctica. I will be returning them to the library now. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.